This is episode 2 of our series data modeling tutorial and in this episode you would learn about fact table and dimension table. What are these tables? Why do we need them? What are the key differences between them? Everything you would get to know in this video. So please stay tuned with me till the end of this video. Before going into the fact and dimension table, we would get to know what is a primary key and what is a foreign key. It's just a brush up. I am sure you already know the key differences between a primary key and a foreign key. It is for someone who is very new into data field. A primary key is used to ensure data in the specific column is unique. It is a column cannot have null values. It is either an existing table column or a column that is specifically generated by the database according to a defined sequence. For example, you can see a snapshot at the bottom left corner of your screen where I have a table named student and then I have another table named student course. So in the student table, student number is going to be used as a primary key because it doesn't have any null value and also all the records are unique. In fact, if we talk about the student name, that cannot be used as a primary key because it has duplicate data. And if I talked about the student form that has a null value, so this column also cannot be used as a primary key. Now, if we talk about the foreign key, so primary key in one table can be a foreign key for another table. But that means a foreign key is a column or group of columns in a relational database table that provides a link between data in two tables. If you need to join two tables, that means there should be some link. For example, over here you can see that student table has student number as a one column and the same column is in the student course table. However, in student course table, the same column has duplicate values. So definitely that cannot be used as a primary key. However, it can be used as a foreign key over here. So that is the main difference between a primary key and foreign key. Over here, you should remember one more thing that a primary key cannot contain null values. And why it cannot contain null values? Now moving forward, we are going to use this model or the diagram or a data model representation to depict what is a fact and what is a dimension table. Over here, the middle table, it's a fact marks table. This is your fact table and all other surrounding tables are known as your dimensional tables over here. So this is just for the representation only. We will talk about this later on. So let's move forward. So the very first question arises, what is a fact table? Well, a fact table is a primary table in a dimensional model. Why is primary? Because all the measures or all the calculations are inside this table and this table basically contains numeric data only. However, it contains some non-numeric data also like for example transaction IDs, invoices IDs etc. But that's a later part to discuss. Over here you would notice two things. One is measurements and second is foreign key to the dimension table. Now perhaps you are wondering what is a measure? In a data warehouse, a measure is a property on which calculations, for example, sum, count, average, minimum, maximum can be made. So generally we need to use a lot of calculations, for example, total YTD, total MTD, total amount, etc. That all we do using calculations or the measures. Now we are going to move forward and this time we are going to see where is our fact table into our data model and over here this is a representation of a data model where you can see clearly your fact table is there. All the foreign keys are in the fact table and those foreign keys are connected to all the dimension tables where you will find your primary keys. In the data model there can be different types of schemas. For example this schema that you are looking over here. It's a representation of a star schema. However, there are other kinds of schema as well, which we are going to discuss in our subsequent videos. 
Also, you will find there are the different kinds of relationships like one to one, one to many, or many to many. In our next video, we are going to discuss about relationships as well. Now, what is the dimension table? A dimension is the structure that categorizes facts and measures in order to enable user to answer business questions. Commonly used dimensions are people, products, place, and time. Well, anything which is numeric, you can consider it as a fact, and anything which is descriptive, you can consider it as a dimension. People and time sometimes are not modeled as dimensions as well. So please always be mindful about that. Let's come back to the same data model that I was just discussing a couple of minutes back. Here you would see that fact table has been surrounded by many other tables. For example, dim student, dim parent, dim manager, etc. All these are starting with dim. That means these are dimensional tables. And all of these tables has their own unique property. For example, dim student table has your student name, surname, etc. So these are the descriptive. Or you can, in another words, if you are going to work in Power BI, you can also say that dimension tables are going to help you to slice and dice the data so that you can see according to different dimensions. For example, if you would like to view the data for different countries, then you can have a slicer as a country names. And this is going to come from the country table, which is another dimensional table. Now let's discuss some of the key differences between a fact and a dimension table. Fact table contains measurements, metrics, and facts about a business process, while the dimension table is a companion to the fact table, which contains descriptive attributes to be used as query constraining. Fact table is located at the center of a star or snowflake schema, whereas the dimension table is located at the edges of the star or snowflake schema. So what is a star schema or what is a snowflake schema or what is a galaxy schema? Everything we are going to discuss in our upcoming videos. Fact table is defined by the green or its most atomic level, whereas dimension table should be wordy, descriptive, complete and quality assured. Fact table helps to store report labels whereas dimension table contains detailed data. And lastly, fact table does not contain a hierarchy whereas the dimension table contains hierarchies. So these were the key differences between a fact and dimension table. Over here, we are going to have a look about the differences between dimension table versus fact table. So guys, over here you would find these all other facts are more or less like the same as I just explained to you previously. If you would like to read it, please pause your screen and have a look. If you have any question or concern, you can let us know. Now question comes, what are the different types of facts? There are basically three types of facts, additive, semi-additive and non-additive. We cannot apply all the functions such as sum, max, mean, average, percentage, etc. that we use for the calculations to all the facts. So based on that, we have the three different kinds of facts. So the very first comes additive. Measures should be added to all dimensions. That means you can apply all the functions over there. You can apply max, mean, percentage, average, or sum, etc. Everything on that. Semi-additive measures. In this type of facts, measures may be added to some dimensions and not with others. For example, consider the price or currency rate. Sum is meaningless on rate. However, average function might be useful. And lastly, the non-additive one. It stores some basic unit of measurement of a business process. Some real-world example includes sales, phone calls, and orders. For example, 5% of profit margin, revenue to asset ratio, etc. All these are non-additive facts. Here, these are based on the data warehouse concepts because in data warehouse, we use the facts and dimensions while doing the data modeling. The very first is confirmed dimensions. 
confirmed dimension is the very fact to which it relates. This dimension is used in more than one star schema or data mart. Generally, whenever we are building a galaxy schema, so in that galaxy schema, we have more than one fact table. And then we are joining those two fact tables using dimensional tables and those dimensional tables, we have dimensions inside them and those dimensions are going to be known as confirmed dimensions. Next is outrigger dimensions. A dimension may have a reference to another dimension table. These secondary dimensions called outrigger dimensions. This kind of dimension should be used carefully. For example, you have country data. Then next to country, you have your provinces, then cities, and all these are connected with each other. So those are known as outrigger dimensions. Then it comes with the shrunken roll-up dimension. Shrunken roll-up dimension are subdivision of rows and columns of a base dimension. These kind of dimensions are useful for developing aggregated fact tables. Dimension to dimension table joins. While well, it's very important, dimensions may have reference to other dimensions as I just discussed. It can be product to subcategory as well. However, these relationships can be molded with outrigger dimensions. As I have just given you example of country, states, etc. Next comes the role playing dimensions. That means a dimension can play more than one role. For example, your date. Date can be any. Date can be date of birth or date can be date of order. A single physical dimension helps to reference multiple times in fact tables as each reference linking to a logically distinct role of the dimension. So, as I just said, date can be many. Like date can be date of birth, date can be date of order or date can be anything else. Now it comes to the junk dimensions. It is a collection of random transaction codes, flags or text attributes. It may not logically belong to any specific dimension. So generally we keep them in separate tables. For example, flags, indicators, etc. Then comes the degenerated dimensions. Degenerated dimensions are without corresponding dimension. It is used in the transaction and collection snapshot of fact tables. This kind of dimension does not have its dimension as it is derived from the fact table. Next is swappable dimensions. They are used when the same fact table is paired with a different version of the same dimension. And lastly is the step dimensions, which are sequential processes like web page events mostly have a separate row in a fact table for every step in process. It tells where the specific steps should be used in the overall session. So all these were the different kinds of dimensions. If you would like to know more, you can read about more data warehousing concepts and there you will get to you know. So what's next? In our next video, we are going to discuss about the relationships in database. It is very important for you to get to know what are the different kinds of relationships. There can be one to one, one to many or many to many. And it is also very important to get to know which kind of relationship you use when or which kind of relationship you should avoid. Everything you would get to know in our next video. So please stay tuned.